Yeah, okay. Um, okay, hello everyone. Once again, um, welcome to Alive with BDO. Um, again, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Min Han and I'm from the audit department. And also I'm a CPA Australia member, associate member as well. And yeah, I hope uh, you enjoy our uh, previous session last week uh, featuring ICW. So today we'll be heading to our second session. Uh, we should be featuring um, CPA Australia. Yeah, um, today uh, we are pleased to have uh, Serena Wu as our guest speaker. Um, Serena is a senior business development manager in CPA Australia. And yeah, and her responsibility includes, uh, let me just slightly read it out, um, development and delivery of strategic account plans. Um, as part of the organization wide account based marketing strategy. And yeah, uh, also um, prior to joining um, CPA Australia, um, she also had um, roles like marketing, sales, and events for institutions such as Lim Kok Wing University and, um, and KDU University. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think that's what I know about it briefly and also maybe I will ask um, Serena to briefly introduce herself why, while she joined in the live session. Hi Serena. Hi Hello. Min Han, how are you? Hi, uh, yeah, I'm fine and how are you too? I'm good, thanks. Hello everyone. Okay. Happy Friday. Hello, everyone. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, Serena, first of all, uh, thank you for agreeing to join us this live session and yeah thank uh, you for inviting me oh no worries uh we are also pleased to have you here um this afternoon so yeah um okay um let's just maybe would you mind to briefly introduce um, yourself to the audience for a bit Sure. Uh, I'm Serena, the Senior Business Development Manager from CPA Australia. Uh, this is my 12th year with CPA Australia, so pretty long oh. time, more, more than a decade already. Yes. <laughs> and I'm very happy to be here with all of you this Friday. Uh, it's hopefully, it's going to turn out to be a good session. Happy to see everyone here. Okay. Um, all right. That's good to hear. Um, okay. First of all, um, Serena, let's just get into it. Uh, maybe we start as um, how can a student uh, register as a, a CPA uh, Australian Associate Member and also what does it mean to be an Associate Member? Okay, uh, so basically uh, in order to find out your exemptions or eligibility for which level of the program because we have two levels. One is a foundation level which consists of six subjects. And then, of course, we have the CPA program level, which also has six subjects. So therefore, in order to find out uh, your eligibility for which level and what number of subjects you can be exempted from, you would need to submit an online application via CP Australia's website. So you can visit cpaustralia.com.au slash apply. And over there, when you are there, if you don't already have a CP Australia account, then you need to create one. And there will be a, an online application where you can input your personal details and upload your supporting documents, such as your degree results and degree certificate and so forth. And uh, subsequent to that, you'll need to wait 10 working days. CP Australia will send you an email to inform you of your exemptions where applicable. So an associate member oh, here okay. means uh, a student member of CP Australia. Okay, um, all right. Um, just to touch on for my next question is that, um, so as for a student, they are in their penultimate uh, account, year accounting graduate. Um, um, what are the are they still able to pursue the CPA Australia program while they are still studying for their university degree in this case? Okay, um, so because the CPA program is actually benchmarked as a postgraduate qualification, 
meaning it is a similar level like a master's program. So traditionally, oh. we, do, we do require uh, applicants uh, to at least have completed their degree uh, in order to be able to advance to a full CPA membership status. However, uh, there are certain universities that do allow their students to take up the CPA program a bit earlier because, um, for example, their accredited degree, the degrees that they have accredited uh, by CPA Australia. So there are certain required subjects that they would need to have completed in order to be eligible for associate membership. So therefore, if their degree syllabus allows them to complete these required subjects earlier, for example, in year two, semester two, or year three, the final year, semester one, then when they have completed these required subjects, they can then apply for CPA associate membership while still as a university student. Oh, so the key here is to complete the subjects earlier to be eligible for yes. CPA. Yes. Ah. So in order to find out whether your degree is accredited by CP Australia and what other required subjects you would need to complete, then you can visit cpaustralia.com.au and click on Become a CPA and choose Accredited Course Search. Subsequently, input the details of your degree and your commencement year, and you should be able to see the details of your degree if it is accredited by CP Australia and the required subjects you would need to complete first. Uh, okay. Um, okay, so um, that coming to my um, next question is that, so as an... Uh, student in their accounting graduate, um, maybe what are the subjects they will require to um, take, for example, to maximize their exempted papers uh, in the CPA program? Okay, so uh, earlier on, I mentioned that there is a foundation level. Mm -hmm. So this foundation level actually has six subjects. Now, this foundation level is basically the purpose of this is to provide uh, applicants with the core knowledge requirement in order to pursue the CPA program. Mm -hmm. So now, if ap the applicant has already completed these areas listed in the foundation level, for example, economics and markets, foundations of accounting, fundamentals of business law, business finance, financial accounting and reporting, and manage mm -hmm. management accounting, then they would be eligible for exemptions from the foundation level to then proceed into the CPA program level. However, uh, as mentioned, all applications will need to go through an online application submission and then it will need to be assessed by our assessment team in our Melbourne office. So although some people may have completed all of these subjects, it also still depends on the um, area of coverage in each subject, whether it meets the uh, foundation level uh, of CPA. So the assessment team will basically do a subject matching. Uh, when uh, you submit your degree results, they will do a subject matching against this foundation level. So if you have fulfilled the core knowledge requirement as stated in the foundation level, then that is when you would be eligible for associate membership. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Um, the other question is that, uh, well, um, I saw that there are many of uh, my colleagues and seniors as well. They are pursuing CPA Australia like me and they are on a self-study mode. So um, can you tell us that how is that um, possible? Uh, there are some other professional examination requires like uh, some form of online classes and um, education classes as well. Okay, so CPA, the CPA program traditionally was designed to be a self-study program. Now, this is to facilitate uh, people who are working. You know, they, they often do not have time to attend classes because, you know, they might be very busy with work. 
And on top of that, you know, managing their personal life, their kids, you know, their families and things like that. So we understand that and hence that's why the CPA program was originally as a self-study program. But um, in recent years, we have actually um, provided tuition support for applicants who require it. However, this is an option. It's not yeah. compulsory for people taking the CPA program. If you think you need tuition, there are full-time and part-time tuition classes available at our tuition providers for you. If not, you can still choose to study the program as a fully self-study program. And this is because CPA Australia has very extensive study resources available to you. So things such as uh, case studies, uh, videos to watch, uh, business simulation, which is basically like a game that you can play and see the outcome of your decisions. And this actually helps in your decision making and problem solving skills. And there are also practice questions and as well as mock exams that you can undertake to prepare for the exam. Yeah. yeah. So, um, Min Han, yes. sorry? Okay. Min Han, um, yeah. SM... mm -hmm. Sorry, go ahead. As an associate member, perhaps you can share on uh, aspects of your professional accounting study. For example, uh, maybe you can share why did you choose to become a member of CPA Australia and take up the CPA program? You know, did you work and study at the same time? And if yes, how was your experience in uh, juggling work and studies concurrently? Uh, okay, um, first and foremost, uh, CPA Australia is globally recognized and especially in the Asian region, including Australia and New Zealand as well. And also, like you said earlier, I think CPA Australia um, offers me the flexibility to undertake their program uh, prior to prior for starting my accounting career or even attending any classes. So I could just start in any time which I like, just by a, a click in the website. So um, yeah, of course, having um, Having gotten used to the uh, Australia uh, curriculum during my undergraduate studies, um, I believe um, I'll be very much <coughs> familiarized with the program. And, and I believe this will give me an upper hand in my studies. So um, as for um, work and my studies, well, first of all, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, I study and work uh, throughout the course since the start of my first week and yeah, it was tough for me initially of course because um, the workload could be overwhelming at times um, yes uh, so what I did here is I tried to allocate um, uh, time for my studies during the weekend for around three to four hours but of course there are exceptions to it because uh, sometimes I'm required to work during the weekend as well and so um, yeah, but what I did here is I prioritized my study given a little bit of time so that it could leave me uh, a lot of breathing space during my final preparation on my study break. And that's how I manage my work and studies concurrently. And also, that's the reason that, that previously I said that the reason that I started CPA to begin with. Okay, okay. So uh, I see there's a question here. How about Malaysian taxation paper? Can students take exam without tuition? So the answer is uh, the tuition provider, which is Sunway Test, that is offering Malaysian taxation. They do offer it in two modes. And one is either as a self-study or on, and the other one is with tuition mode. So if you take the self-study option, yes, you can do it without uh, tuition for Malaysia taxation. Okay. Right. Uh, thank you, Serena, for answering that. And of course, uh, personally, and I have one more question here. Um, and 
so as a member and associate myself, um, is there uh, any professional development support uh, for me, um, also including during this uh, pandemic? Sure. Uh, CPA Australia actually offers a lot of professional development, uh, you know, for members. Um, and some of these could also be open to non-members as well. And this might be in the form of uh, online trainings or workshops, webinars, uh, conferences, as well as reading materials, podcasts, and the CPA Australia YouTube channel, just to name a few. And even for members, we do even offer complimentary uh, professional learning hours of up to 44.5 hours. And these uh, would be in the form of complimentary courses that members can take up to obtain these complimentary hours. Uh, okay, so, all right. Um, yeah, maybe would you uh, maybe specify... Just a briefly tell about uh, um, the three popular figures uh, in Malaysia who are, who are under Tech CPA Australian program, or who who is um, who is the full member at the moment. Uh, sure, sure. Actually, <laughs> CPA Australia has a number of uh, senior leaders in the yes. industry, and uh, uh, the the. The few that I can think off the top of my head at the moment um, mm. is uh, our member Narita Naziri. Uh, she is the head of group succession, talent development and human capital director of the Maybank Group. Oh. And then uh, we also have Dato Nick Hasyudin. Uh, he is actually the group managing director and chief executive officer of Lembaga Tabong Haji. And aside from this, yeah, we also have Dato Dr. Yakub bin Mustafa, who is the Auditor General of Malaysia. Uh, we also have Nazmi bin Othman. He is the Chief Financial Officer of Tanaga National Berhad. Oh, yeah, so, okay. so quite, quite a number of senior leaders are... Uh, both in the commercial as well as, uh, you know, in the um, mm. accounting firms as well. Quite a number, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm surprised there are quite a number really because I know that I'm really proud to be part of it, to, to think about it. And yeah, so um, as for the, another question is that, um, is there uh, anything new or something to look forward um, for CPA Australia at the moment? Sure. Um, well, you know, as a professional accounting body, uh, we are always evolving and innovating to keep up with the industry, to keep up with the times in order to stay relevant. Mm -hmm. And this is important to members taking the CPA program or members taking our professional development courses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as of last year, uh, CPA Australia actually launched a suite of short courses called micro credentials in the area of digital finance. Mm -hmm. So as we know, you know, all these emerging technologies, they are the latest buzzwords in the industry. Uh, and we recognize that there are a number of people who would like to upskill themselves in this area. So these short courses provide very bite-sized learning uh, they, all, they only require about 20 hours of study. So it doesn't require uh, a long-term study in order to upskill yourself in uh, these relevant areas. So these uh, courses are called micro-credentials and there are actually six subjects uh, in this micro-credential uh, suite. So those who are interested mm -hmm. can pick particular subjects to upskill themselves. Uh, for example, uh, I would say, let me give some examples. For uh, One of the subjects would be data interpretation and visualization. So this actually helps uh, those taking this particular module to understand more about data literacy, data interpretation, you know, data governance and security. Mm -hmm. 
as well as artificial intelligence and data analytics. And that's just one of the subjects. So other subjects uh, could also be about um, the digital finance ecosystem. So this gives people uh, an overview of the whole entire ecosystem. Uh, and uh, this can include the landscape, you know, what are the fintech innovations, what are digital transformations that are currently happening uh, in the workforce. So in order to take up these courses, uh, you know, it's very simple. They, uh, those who are interested can just go to the CP Australia website and look up micro-credentials. And once they are there, they can then choose whichever module that they are interested in sign up for it and then undertake the course, complete it within 20 hours and sit for a short assessment consisting of 20 multiple choice questions. So upon completing this assessment, CP Australia will award uh, the users with a digital badge from CP Australia. And this badge will contain information regarding the course that they've done what are the learning outcomes that are achieved from these courses? And uh, users can then use these badges to put, you know, in their LinkedIn profile, for example, or in their CVs or any digital platform. And uh, these digital badges uh, will show a proficiency level at a degree level. So if there are users who want to obtain a higher level of understanding, they can then take all the six micro-credential courses and undertake a final exam where then they will be awarded with a digital certificate. And this will be at a mastery level. So this is uh, a similar level like a master's uh, program level of understanding. So okay, that's so, what's uh, happening uh, recently. Uh, so is that what you are talking about is that it's like an additional course that provided by CPA Australia. Is it? Yes, uh, correct. Uh, so these are very bite-sized uh, short courses mm. that people can undertake yeah. if they wish to upskill themselves in this particular area, in the area of digital finance. Oh, okay. Oh, that looks really interesting. And yeah, um, okay. Uh, so um, as we know that we are living um, in a new normal now, so may I ask, um, is there any like differences in the program um, during this uncertain period of time? And also, uh, uh, are these differences to stay um, during this new normal? Sure. So right. uh, as of last year, we all know that's when the COVID pandemic hit. Uh, you know, people started working from home, uh, studying from home. So in order to allow our members to continue with their CPA program studies and ensure that there are no disruptions, uh, CPA Australia is actually one of the first uh, professional accounting bodies to offer exams on an online mode. So what this means is that those taking the CPA program uh, will not need to defer their exams, you know, or pause it because they cannot go to an, uh, a test center venue to sit for their exams. They can actually sit for their exams uh, in the comfort of their home as long as it is you know, a conducive exam environment to sit for exams. And we are still continuing members with this option and it would continue for as long as there's a demand for it. And to date, actually, we have conducted more than 20,000 online exams across 66 countries, across various time zones. And a lot of our members actually appreciate this online exam mode, which is actually an invigilated mode. So meaning there is an invigilator with you during the exam. The only difference is you do not need to go to a test center venue to sit for your exam. So this provides a lot of flexibility to members to continue with their studies. Oh, all right. Um, just to share a bit, um, I personally, I did um, my exam in, at home when the, the outbreak started initially. So um, it was a, well, I would say that it was a last minute decision, uh, last minute uh, changes because of my, me, myself, I was very worried that I would need to defer 
my paper, um, given the current situation. But uh, what I would say is um, the online exam, when I take it, um, well, I mean, there are a lot of question mark and uncertainties for me at the moment. But I do really like the experience on it because I think it's really smooth for myself. So although I still, um, I still enroll for uh, examination uh, center at the moment because uh, I'm just uh, worried if there's any uh, issue on my personal like, laptop or computer and stuff like that. So yeah, but I mean, um, CPA do really provide the flexibility to either to do it um, in the examination uh, center or you could do it at home. For me, um, they did really well on this because um, personally, I really enjoy, enjoy um, both experience in the center and at home as well. Just to, yeah, just, just my personal sharing. With you. Oh, good to know. Good to know. We, we, we love hearing uh, such positive testimonials from our members. It actually brightens our day a lot. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I can see there's a question here. Uh, how many papers max could be exempted if the graduates have fulfilled the subject matching at foundation? Meaning, how many papers they need to take at professional or advanced level? Okay, so the CPA program has six subjects consisting of four compulsory and two elective subjects. Uh, if you are exempted from, from the full uh, foundation level of six subjects, then you will need to proceed on to the CPA program level and this will then have six subjects to be completed within six years from the date you become an associate member. So you would become an associate member once you start on the CPA program. And then when you do that, you will have six years to complete uh, six subjects. Okay, so oh, okay. Minhan, uh, congrats so... on doing well. Yeah. Doing well in your CPA program. Uh, you know, I can see that you scored quite a number of distinction and high distinction scores. Congratulations. So maybe you can share what are your secrets to success? Um, I think, well, first of all, thank you, Serena. I think there's not much secrets here, but I think the key here is um, hardworking, uh, determination, and of course, self-discipline as well. So, uh, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, like I prioritize my study um, given any available time. And of course, on top of that, I think um, employing the right study techniques um, uh, do give me, uh, uh, it's crucial to uh, score, to pass the examination with flying colors. Um, and of course, ability is really subjective to everyone, but what I do is I writing down and highlighting down the keynotes uh, while reading the book helps me to understand and remember a little bit better. And, yeah, and of course, I think the most important one is to utilize the CPA resources, which is provided to all the members. And personally, for me in particular, it's the knowledge equity, which uh, CPA just partner just like a recent partnership which Knowledge Equity provide uh, short webinars and videos on all the modules uh, of the subject itself. And of course, like um, Serena mentioned earlier, um, the Knowledge Equity do provide um, uh, a lot of practice questions which is available as well and also um, final mock exam questions. So um, I find the practice questions is really helpful especially the final mock exam, because I think it is the closest, things to, closest thing to the actual exam in terms of uh, the course, uh, the exam format and the difficulty level as well. And also it shows you a scale score, um, which, is, uh, which allow you to gauge uh, your performance in the exam after you attend the mock exam. So, and of course, the scale score is designed similarly to the CPS scale score itself. So, I encourage um, all the people to utilize the resources. 
practice all the questions as well and uh, attempt the final mock exam before entering into the examination hall. Yeah. Right. Good advice. Uh, I see that uh, there's a comment here. Uh, the senior advisor of BDO Malaysia, Datuk Fizal Mustafa, is also a chairman of Exim Bank. Yes, he is as uh, a CPA Australia member as well. He has actually participated in our committees. Uh, you know, as CP Australia has a council, a council as well as working groups or committees uh, that champion on the uh, subject matter. For example, on tax, on public practice, uh, on technology and innovations, for example. So yes, uh, Dato Fizal is a CP Australia member. Thank you for uh, highlighting that. <laughs> okay, so um, Minhan, perhaps yeah. uh, you can share what are some of your work duties. You know, do you do you find that the subjects in the CP? Oops. I'm sorry, I'm losing. We losing you here, Serena. Okay, um, sorry, what is the question again? Because um, we are just we'll be losing you here because of um, our line issue. So, would you mind to repeat the question again? Sorry. Sure. Okay. Uh, what are some of your work duties? Uh, do you find that the subjects in the CPA program are relevant to your work? And how has it helped you in your career? Okay, uh, first of all, um, my work duties uh, includes... Um, um, Briefly, uh, looking at company financial statements, uh, making necessary adjustment if needed, if there are any error arises along the way. And of course, most importantly, is to ensure that um, the accounting statement, is, the financial statement is, uh, is prepared in accordance to the latest financial uh, accounting standards. So um, the subject which I found really helpful um, offered by CPA Australia is financial reporting and advanced audit and assurance, which I'm currently taking now. Um, so, for example, um, financial um, reporting um, explains uh, the certain accounting methods, um, backing up by the explanation of the latest uh, accounting standards, whereas the advanced audit assurance uh, explains the rationale behind certain auditing procedures um, to justify and meet the criteria of the latest auditing standards. So I believe uh, both of these um, really are really closely relevant to my daily routine works as an auditor myself. Yes. Um, and maybe you can share how does BDO support staff who pursue a professional accounting qualification? Um, yeah, uh, in BDO, I think um, you are able, we have this uh, sponsorship program, I think, which I signed up for, which is four years duration. You need to be born by the company for four years. And of course, um, the sponsorships include uh, the exam fees, um, for the first attempts only, and of course, uh, includes a like tuition fee and other relevant study material. So um, I believe that um, it is if you are if you if you want to pursue uh, CPA Australia and having a work, good working experience as well, I think yeah, I think BDO does provide um, a, a adequate support on on this side of things. Yes. Right. And uh, there's a question here for you. Did you manage to uh, open your book during exams uh, in order to pass with flying colours? Uh, some of the subject, yes. But to be honest with you, I rarely open the book because it's not that um, I'm very smart. It's just that um, the time is really tight. The timing is really rushed. So... Um, I would just have a glance on certain areas that I'm really unsure of. If I'm maybe around 70, 80% sure of my answer, maybe I would just, um, just skip it and I would just do the next question. So I think it depends on the time as well. If you are able somehow to finish early, 
and you want to be sure of you did not miss out anything, maybe if you have any extra time, you could just go back to the question and just uh, look at the, just refer the book and then continue so on and so on. And of course, during the exam, the CPA exam allow you to pin, pin the question where you can um, keep, keep in review the question. So when you, when you see the pin sign on your question, you can go back to the question that you want to re maybe want to refer later on. And I think that is really helpful as well. So I think if you, like I said, if you have the time, you could go back to it. But if you are still unsure of, you might just pin it and you just move on doing the questions. Right. So there's another question for you. Would you still choose a program with open book option, or, or it doesn't uh, it doesn't matter? <laughs> um. Well, uh, personally, I think it doesn't matter because uh, I think you should be prepared when I mean, you go to the exam. Um, of course, uh, opening book does uh, helps a bit, but in personally, from my experience, I don't think it helps as much because like i said due to the timing issue so yeah i actually don't mind either of that close book or open book would be fine for me sure so the cpa program uh the exams are open book exams and the reason for this is because we don't expect members to memorize all the information uh we know that during school there's a lot of this going on however when you pursue a professional accounting qualification there is a lot of uh, independent problem solving and how do you implement the skills that you have learned. So that is how the exam questions are crafted. So that is why we allow you to have open book, mainly for the purpose of a quick reference rather than, uh, you know, to look for answers in it per se. You, you, you actually do need to be well prepared when you come for exams. And uh, open book here would be mainly just for quick reference. Okay, so there's a question here. What's the difference between CPA Australia versus CANS? Okay, so, um, well, uh, I can only speak for CPA Australia uh, since I work in CPA Australia. I would say that uh, generally, and this is uh, generally speaking, uh, in terms of differences between one professional body and another professional body is usually in the subjects. So have a look at the subjects that each professional body is offering. You know, you, you'll see some of the differences there. Uh, even in terms of uh, subjects that, have, uh, that are similar, perhaps also uh, in terms of the outline, the subject outline and area of coverage in the subject itself. And then there are also, of course, differences in terms of the method of study. So some professional exams would require you to undertake uh, tuition classes and some don't, like CP Australia. So um, in terms of CP Australia, how we try to craft our program is that we try to include a lot of uh, business skills in it, uh, problem solving skills and management skills. This is because we firmly believe that as a professional accountant, you are not a number cruncher, just a number cruncher, because uh, the workplace is evolving very rapidly, right? And accountants today are not the same as accountants of many years ago. So accountants today are very much involved in decision makings at management level. Uh, they are also seen as business advisors. So therefore, in order to rise to, you know, these challenges in the workplace uh, and uh, evolve according to the industry needs and demands, you do need to equip yourself with skills, not just on the technical skills, but you also need to uh, develop your, uh, your uh, problem-solving skills, your analytical skills, your strategic thinking skills, and your business skills, which are all very important for accountants of today. And as we go into the emerging technology phase now, uh, you know, it's also important for accountants to equip themselves in knowledge uh, of emerging technologies, you know, like artificial intelligence, blockchain, and so on and so forth. 
So yeah. the role of accountants are always evolving. And uh, so CPA Australia, the CPA program is actually designed in such a way to give members the option. We don't want you to pigeonhole yourself to just working in, you know, um, uh, auditing or taxation, but also if the need arises, you can actually be in any number of roles uh, and have the necessary skills to be in such a role. For example, quite a number of our members actually are entrepreneurs. They run their own businesses. And these are not just accounting firms that they've set up. Uh, our members are very diverse. They uh, have their own coffee uh, making business. They have uh, their own business in fashion. So you might think oh. these are all not, not related, right? But actually, yeah. uh, as a CP Australia member, you are equipped with all these business skills to help you to then uh, also look into other areas of, of your career, should you wish, and uh, you know, be able to diversify. Uh, meaning you can be a business leader, you can even go into sales and marketing if you wish as a CP Australia member uh, and uh, not necessarily just be, you know, involved in finance and accounting. So uh, I hope that in a way answers uh, your question, the person who asked this. Um, let's see if uh, there are any further questions. Minhan, do you see any further questions? Oh, oh, yes. Um, I would like to also highlight that BDO is actually a recognized employer partner of CPA Australia. So what that means when you join BDO as a member of CPA Australia is uh, you do enjoy some benefits as a member. So your three years of practical work experience, uh, normally you would need to get a mentor to mentor you and you would need to list down all the skills that you've demonstrated throughout the three years normally. But if you join a recognized employer partner like BDO, then you do not need to get a mentor and you do not need to tell us what skills that you've demonstrated throughout the three years. So it's a simpler way of getting your practical experience recognized by CP Australia. And once you become a full member of CP Australia, there is this 120 learning hours to fulfill every triennium cycle. And this is across all professional accounting bodies. So traditionally, uh, normally, you would need to list down, you know, all the uh, details of the workshops and trainings you've attended uh, for uh, CP Australia every year. But if you work in a recognized employer partner, like BDO, you actually don't need to do all that. And the reason for this is because uh, when an organization applies to be a recognized employer partner, there are certain criteria they need to fulfill. And if they have fulfilled that, in a way, CP Australia has already accredited uh, these employer organizations. And that is why uh, you have a simpler method of getting your practical experience and as well as your learning hours recognized by CP Australia. Oh, okay, so yeah, I mean, uh, thank you for Serena for all the information that you provided us here. And also, uh, thank you for the very insightful session today. No uh, problem. Thank you for your lovely sharing earlier as a member. Yeah, I hope that my sharing uh, do helps uh, to the audience up there and hope that what Serena has just explained also um, help us to gain more knowledge about um, CP Australia after this session. And yeah, and also we reach uh, the end of our session. Uh, also, right. Uh, thank, yeah. Thank you once again, and also uh, please uh, for please join our upcoming session as well uh, every Friday in March um, for twelve PM live from BDO Instagram BDO Malaysia Instagram page, and right. of course uh, once again, Serena, thank you very much, and thank you very much for tuning in. No problem. Yeah. Thank thank you everyone yeah. for being here today. Uh, I really enjoyed this session. Thank you, uh, Minhan, for your uh, insightful uh, advice. And those who would like to reach out to me or connect with me, you can do so. You can email me at kl for Kuala Lumpur, kl at cpaustralia.com.au. 
So you can address your email to me with any queries you have after this. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a great weekend and a lovely Friday afternoon. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. See you, Serena. Bye-bye. See Bye-bye. you, Minhan. Bye. See you.